Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Morning After National Signing Day. Want to take a little bit of a deeper dive into this Auburn class in 2024. And this is a class that we've tracked for the last eight months, breaking down a lot of commitments. Now it's time to take kind of a step back, bird's eye view approach of what position groups Auburn knocked it out of the park with, and what position groups maybe fell a little bit short of expectation. But at the bottom line, if you're an Auburn Tigers fan, like you look at this class, top eight in the country. It, it's just you see where this program is going under Hugh Freeze. You brought Hugh Freeze in to recruit, to develop that talent. It's exactly what you're seeing. And the stark difference between the Brian Harsin recruiting classes and the Hugh Freeze recruiting classes on full display. Phenomenal class by Hugh Freeze in 2024. Auburn fans, obviously, a ton to be excited about. Before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys. It has been just an absolute blast to cover this class for the last eight months, breaking down the commitments. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you guys have shown. Your support allows me to do this. It's something I really love doing, love talking, recruiting. Appreciate you guys. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And we'll start with the, the position that they crushed it with. And I actually have two positions, right? And obviously the wide receiver position is going to steal the headlines. And Rightfully so. This is the best Auburn class of wide receivers I can remember Auburn bringing in, quite possibly the best in history, right? When you land two five stars in Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson from the state of Alabama, this is a Auburn wide receiver room that was lacking so much talent under the Brian Harson era. And you are able to get Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson, two of the most physically imposing wide receivers in this 2024 class. This is massive for this Auburn program. Hugh Freeze needs the weapons for this offense to run. Well, there's some weapons coming in. And then you take a look at guys like Bryce Kane or Malcolm Simmons, who are kind of playing second fiddle in this class. But when you hear the Auburn staff talk about a guy like Bryce Kane, like he's also a stud, going to be a massive difference maker for this Auburn offense. I mean, not only is this the, the wide receiver position just absolutely loaded for Auburn, it was also a position of massive need. And to see Hugh Freeze look at his roster and say, yeah, we need to figure out this wide receiver position and then go execute it on the recruiting trail. Job well done by the staff, by Hugh Freeze in this Auburn program. Now, the position group I want to highlight a little bit more that, again, is going to get less of the attention because you brought in a wide receiver class that truly is historic, is that defensive line group. I mean, it is absolutely massive. And we talked about Amaris Williams when he flipped his commitment uh, yesterday during signing day. And Amaris Williams is a guy that I think will be ending up a five-star. When they make their final uh, recruiting evaluations, it's a guy that's top 40 in the country right now. We watched the film yesterday. It is rare to see guys who are 6'3", 270 pounds, be as athletic, as explosive, as bursty, bendy as Amaris Williams is. And you look at the projectable traits, right? When you're a defensive lineman, an edge rusher, whether you're playing at three tech, whether you're playing the edge rusher spot, to have size and athleticism, and movement skills it is a premier. It, you need those traits to be an elite guy. And Amaris Williams is, I mean, he checks off every single box that you want. And we watched him run the football like he was a 210-pound running back. Then we watched him come off the edge like he was a 220-pound edge rusher. And then you look at the measurables. He's 6'3", 270. He's going to be special. He's going to play early for Auburn. I think he leads this defensive line class. But when you start scrolling down and looking at what Auburn did on that defensive line, you have a guy in Jamonta Waller coming from Mississippi who, again, was actually a five-star to start this process out, a guy that we're really excited about potentially playing that Jack linebacker spot. I think Joseph Phillips is another guy that might be kind of transitioning to that edge position, another top 130 guy. Now I'm going to go down to one of my personal favorites in this class, and that's Malik Blockton. Again, not necessarily the top 200 guy that's going to headline this class. You take a look at Malik Blockton, what he did as a senior in the state of Alabama. 30 tackles for loss, 40 sacks, a guy that can play the three tech can probably put on a rough weight to kind of play that nose and play on the inside. Malik Blockton, similar to Amaris Williams, has that size and that athleticism to be special on that defensive line. And many of you guys know how I talk about recruiting. I care what it looks like on the football field. It's nice to have the track times. It's nice to kind of thrive at the camp settings. But what are you doing when the pads are on, the lights are on Friday night? Malik Blockton with 30 tackles for loss, 14 sacks as a senior in high school. 
you're really excited about what he's going to bring to the table. So you start talking about guys like Jamonte Waller and Malik Blockton and Amaris Williams. You could scroll down and talk about TJ Lindsay coming from IMG Academy. This defensive line class, make no mistake about it, is one of the best position groups that Auburn is bringing in. And I'm extremely excited to see what it does. And it, many of y'all know when I, when I talk about defenses, that, that defensive line is by far the position group that I'm looking at the most. When you have the ability to stop the run on first and second down with your defensive line and then go get after the passer on third and long, that's the bones of a great defense. Every great defense that you look at in college or in the NFL, they have, it starts up front on the defensive line, right? The Georgia Bulldogs, the Michigan Wolverines, looking at those elite defenses, it starts up front. And I think Auburn brought in a phenomenal class on that defensive line. Now, another position group that I want to talk about, and if there was one area where maybe you're saying, did it fall a little bit short? And I don't know if I'd even make this argument because, again, this Auburn class is complete. It's deep. It has a ton of talent. I want to talk a little bit about this offensive line class and, and specifically why I think it's so important to talk about the offensive line class at the recruiting at the high school recruiting level is it is very often hard to find quality transfer offensive line because every program wants them and there just ain't that many in the transfer portal. I think Auburn did a really good job getting some transfer portal guys last cycle, obviously trying to do that again in this cycle. You want to make sure you're getting a lot of offensive linemen and quality offensive linemen. And in my kind of evaluation on this offensive line class, one headlined by DeAndre Carter coming from modern day, Really, really high floor. Like it, this is a, a body that's really, really big. He has phenomenal athleticism for his size. Probably needs to maybe, I don't I, I guess this will be up to the Auburn strength and condition and the offensive line coach, but get that body more right, I guess you'd say. But he's a guy that has the frame, has the play strength, obviously coming from modern day. Wouldn't be surprised to see DeAndre Carter play early. Those modern day guys normally have a good track record of making the transition from high school ball to college ball, because that's basically a college football program out there in California. Now, the other offensive linemen that they brought in were kind of project-ish offensive linemen, right? You have the Juco and Seth Welford, and then Favor Edward, a guy that I'm really, and you talk about a diamond in the rough, and this is kind of why I'm saying I'm not necessarily down on the offensive line class. It's just two out of those three guys you're probably having to be patient with in terms of playing time. Now, Favor Edwin, for many Auburn fans, he committed late last night, maybe not too familiar with them. This is a guy that is coming from Nigeria. He just started playing football in the spring of 2023. So the fact that he even has three stars next to his name tells you a little bit about the athleticism and the ceiling that there is for a guy like Favor Edwin. Now, that means he's probably not going to be playing his first, maybe even second year at Auburn. But what it also means is the ceiling as a former basketball player at six, six and a half, 300 pounds is very, very high. Because what, what is this? I mean, he already is a three-star offensive tackle by not even playing a full year of college football. What's it going to look like when he's going into year three of football at a college program like Auburn? This is a guy that I think you might not hear headlining the class in 2024, but again, in that 2025 year, 2026, we might be talking about an all-SEC offensive lineman in favor of Edwin. And the guess the reason – the only reason I'm maybe a little lower on this offensive line class, I guess, in comparison to some of the awesome, awesome position groups they brought in was there are some, I don't know if you'd say lottery tickets, right? Cause favor Edwin, a guy that hasn't played a ton of football. Yes. The upside's high, but is he going to pan out or not? I mean, DeAndre Carter is probably the only guy I'm looking at in this class and saying, yeah, I have a very high, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he's going to hit and he's going to be a solid offensive lineman for up. And again, you want to get more guys that you feel that way about because when you go to the transfer portal, you want to make you don't want to have to rely on the transfer portal for offensive linemen in the future. You want to make sure you have guys coming in in that high school rank. Now, again, this is me being critical of this class. This is a top eight class in the country. It's massively, massively better than any other classes we've seen in the Brian Harson era. This is not me getting up here and saying this is a failure for Auburn in the class. That's just the position group that I would say maybe is you're just kind of highlighting and you're keeping a note on. Now, the, 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 the diamond in the rough prospect that I want to talk about, a guy that, again, probably not going to get talked about a ton, but I think can play, and this is a guy that we broke down when he committed, is Jalen Crawford. Coming in at that cornerback spot, he's a box checker, right? And he's a three-star. He doesn't necessarily have the crazy track times or the crazy build right now, but long, 
has good athleticism, and I think is just going to be a really solid football player for the Auburn Tigers in the next couple of years. This is a guy that we watched the film together on. I think we're all pretty high on him, not necessarily the headliner of the class, but a guy that I think is going to be a very good football player for the Auburn Tigers in the next couple of years. All in all, uh, Auburn, you just – you look at my notes. I'm trying to just – and I guess we talk real quick about Walker White too. And this is a guy that kind of checks all the boxes that you want in a quarterback. One, the dual threat ability in that Hugh Freeze offense, massive rocket arm. This is a guy that maybe needs a, sh- a redshirt year, not a redshirt year, but a year to kind of grow, develop, kind of hone in that accuracy. But a guy that when it clicks, and if it does click, you're looking at a special wide receiver. And you look at the talent that he's going to have around him, Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson, potentially Ryan Williams. He's going to have – the bones and the weapons in place to be a very good quarterback for Auburn, obviously a position that just hasn't been good enough for the Auburn Tigers the last couple of years. Hugh Freeze crushed it. I don't think they're necessarily done. The emphasis now and the attention now is going to the transfer portal. I think Auburn fans are extremely excited to see what they do there. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. We'll keep you guys updated with the transfer portal additions as well. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribe to the channel and we'll talk to y'all later.